Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to some more Minecraft survival where today I'm going to be walking you guys through how I add immersion to my builds and make them feel alive and we're going to be doing that on this section of our village right here. We built up all of these houses you can see on the top level last episode and at the moment they're looking pretty bland and boring so I think we need to do something about that. So I have created a spectacular unparalleled, some would even say downright extreme four-step plan as to how to do that. <laughs> it's actually none of those things. It's simply just the order in the way I like to go about doing it. So the first thing I like to do, of course, is construct some actual building slash building. And if we just look around here, you can see I've already done that. So step one, check. Step two is to create all of the roads and pathways connecting up all of the different builds. Now this really only applies if you're building a village like I am here. I suppose if you've just got a single build, maybe you can do this just for the pathway leading up to the main door. Step three is to add in all of the other elements that tell a story and look as though they serve some sort of purpose. So if we take our marketplace here as an example, we have some lampposts giving off light, some crates being carried around on carts, and we even have a painting easel just over my right shoulder there. So basically, all of the bits and the bobs. The fourth and final step is landscaping. So that's custom trees, custom terrain, and anything else that really fits into that category. I like to do all of that last. Now I will be talking a little bit more in detail about each of those steps as we get to doing them, but as I said, we're gonna put all of that into practice for this section of the village over here. So let's just jump straight into it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, just a second. I have a super quick PSA I would like to make you guys all aware of. So currently I am recording this video on the 21st of May, 2020. And at the moment on YouTube, there is a little bit of a scam going about in the comment section with comments that say something like, wanna be friends. Do not interact with these comments at all. If you see one, simply report it and move on along. It is a bot that's trying to hack into your account and do bad things, which obviously we want to avoid. So be aware guys. And if you wanna know a little bit more about this issue, then I'm gonna do my best to remember to leave a video link in the cards now where you can check that out and look a bit more into it. Pathways are of course a very important part of every village. They are almost necessary and kind of look weird without them, like my solo houses here that don't connect to each other. Looks a whole lot better once we actually get some pathways down, I think you'll all agree there. So even if you just had the same pathway design throughout the entire village, that sometimes is all you need, but they are also a very good tool for showing a visual difference between separate sections of a town. So say for example you had a village with a poor side and a rich side. You could have a nicer pathway design over on the rich side of town and a poorer or a not quite as nice pathway design on the poorer side of town. I'm not doing that personally, I don't want to, they're all going to be the same social standard here in my village, but that doesn't mean I can't change up the pathway design. So on the sections that are going to be more well walked on and, and used a lot and have a high foot traffic, those are going to be made out of stone. Obviously when the village was first created they wanted to make the walkways that were going to be used a lot out of something solid, hence all the stone. So wherever villagers would mainly go around the village it's going to be a stone pathway using this design here. Lots of cobble, stone, a little bit of dirt added in just to show it has had some wear and tear and also some divots into the ground. But that's not often the only case of getting around. Sometimes alleyways and offshoots and shortcuts are found over time in between all of the houses and kind of evolve to become unofficial pathways shall we say so those are not going to be made out of stone they're sort of just going to be very muddy and dirty so lots of coarse dirt path blocks a little bit of granite just to show some solidness but yeah those are going to look a whole lot different to the main pathways not that those look particularly nice it's it's meant to look very worn down but this one even less so so yeah that's how i'm changing up a little bit with the pathways in my village I didn't actually realize until I watched that time lapse, but I have trapped two horses inside of my Fletcher's fenced off area over here. You guys okay? <laughs> Want to get out by any chance? I, I feel bad. We had one, I think, last episode, but obviously two have now walked in here. So I'm going to see if these guys want to get out. That's not an axe, that's a sword. Come on, push that way. Thank you. 
Really? You want to stay in there forever? And stay out. Yeah, that's right. Move your butt along. I'm sure you'll be back in here in <laughs> no time at all. So that is two out of the four steps complete. We're now almost ready to move on to the third. I just want to do a little bit extra explaining here because there's a couple of things I missed to talk about in the time lapse. So first of all, this isn't completely spick and span and only stone. We do have a little bit of dirt that has been trailed into the middle because that, that's going to happen, obviously. If people are walking through the money section, they're going to walk some mud onto the stone pathways. So we've got a little bit of that as well as some pebbles in the shape of stone buttons I've just opened the trap door there gotta go careful and uh, I've also done a little bit of muddied area around the edge of the stone pathway so where it kind of cuts off into the grass section I've done a few more coarse dirt and uh, granite and path blocks as well so yeah that's just a tiny little detail and there's a couple of houses I haven't been able to link up to like this one here with all of our texture I'll probably talk a little bit about that by the way later on the doorways around this side so I haven't been able to follow up just yet but uh yeah that's the pathways done for now and now what we've got to do is all the other elements the bits and the bobs so I'm just gonna really have a play around here for a good couple of hours I would imagine coming up with a few things we can chuck in to give this place some extra life so yeah no time lapse for this one just because it's not gonna work that way at all so I will see you in a second but a little bit longer for me I really do love this sort of building, adding in small little details that take a whole lot of time and don't look like they should. <laughs> that kind of sounds sarcastic, but I'm being serious. I, I really love adding in small little details like this. So I think the best way to go about this is to just kind of walk around and show you what I've done, give you some inspiration and some ideas. And for the high street, I've just done a couple of carts, not really anything else too much. So yeah, not going to bother walking down there, but for the rest, we're just going to take a stroll around and the first thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to recommend you do not do. <laughs> so this is a notice board and because the trapdoor here and the signs are a full block, I can't use like fences or anything else to look like this is supported. So I have to use armor stands and they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> it took absolutely ages to get these positioned correctly and I've done it for the most part except from this teeny tiny bit here, but I'm not even gonna chance budging this one along a little bit. It took an embarrassing amount of time to even get this, so yeah, I don't wanna mess up now, but um, this little notice board right here is actually a little bit inspired by Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. I've been playing through that recently during quarantine, and uh, I was thinking actually, this entire village that we're building up looks like a less grand version of Tucson or uh, Beauclair, I guess I should say, really. It, it's got the same uh, colors, I guess. It, it's just not quite as grandiose as that is. But um, yeah, this is uh, inspired by that, hence why all of the signs. So we have a, a Gwent tournament going on, some help is needed on a fishing trip, and then we have a mysterious cave warning the villagers not to enter. And uh, it's getting nighttime, actually. So let me just head over and sleep, and we will continue our tour. Good morning, good morning world. Okay, let's fly back over and carry on. So yeah, that is a detail that I decided to add in and took a long, long time. <laughs> so maybe do this if you have time and patience for armor stand trickery, but yeah, just as we go through here, you can see a bunch more carts carrying around some crates and other knows what. Um, also, a little well design here. I didn't come up with this. I saw it on Pinterest, I believe, a very long time ago. But yeah, just a super cute little well design. I really quite like that. And if we carry on moving forward here, you can see I've got some of my lamp posts kind of dotted in from time to time. Um, haven't gone too crazy with them, just every now and again. And this house maybe has a little bit of a berry farm around the back. So they're growing some berries out here and I've used some jungle wood just to get away from the ungodly amount of spruce that I've used so far in this village. So yeah, I thought that looks quite nice. And then we carry on going around this way. And this house has some crops around the back. So basically every crop I think I've planted here uh, I think looks pretty cool and a stack of hay bales ready to be shipped off to somewhere else in the village that may need it. And then it gets a little bit empty round here as it kind of just drifts off into nothingness. So yeah, some more things will probably be added in over time here. But 
this little thing, more armor stand trickery. We have a stool round the back. So <laughs> I wanted to make a very small table and stool. Uh, this is meant to be like a woodworker's table or a wood carver maybe. This is their tool and they're getting ready to carve some wood into some sort of statue maybe. But it, I, I wanted to have a really small stool and I was going to put like a fence with a pressure plate on top. But then I thought maybe I could do some armor stand stuff. So yeah, this one is a little bit lower down. It's just an armor stand with two piston uh, pushed blocks into it with a leather cap on top. So it looks a little bit like a stool with their table in front. Kind of got to use your imagination a little bit there. So this mysterious cave that I have on our notice board up here. Oh my goodness, okay, do not punch the signs. <laughs> if I had a broke my armor stand there, if I had a sword in hand, that would have been tragic. Okay, note to self, no punching the signs. Um, I've actually gone ahead and built this, built this mysterious cave, so if we go through one of our alleyways here, we can see another cart, and just around here, we have it. So, I had like a little bit of a mini hill, there's a cat around here somewhere. Um, and I thought I'd do something, so we got a cave, and once again, this is also inspired by Witcher. Um, for those of you who play it, you'll probably know kind of what the idea of this is, but pretty much... Uh, in villages, sometimes they will have some sort of cave that a monster lives in, then you go in and kill it, and you're left with kind of like a smelly, rotting mess at the bottom here that the villagers then have to clean up. So I've carved out some sort of cave shape here, added in some slabs and stairs and made it look all cave-like. And then we have all of this at the bottom, the actual monster's lair, the den, and where it stayed. So it's all kind of like rotting away down the bottom here, a bunch of blocks. We also have some smoldering magma blocks with some fire underneath. That's what all the smoke particles are. And a dragon egg in the middle. So this is also kind of like a little bit of lore, maybe. Perhaps before this village really got underway, there was once a dragon that lived here inside this den. And Geralt of Rivia, <laughs> maybe not, but somebody came along and slayed it, but forgot to destroy the dragon egg. So maybe one day, sometime far in the future, that dragon egg will hatch and... A release a dragon to destroy this entire place so <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen whilst we're building it but yeah I just thought that was a really fun little thing I could add in. So now it is time for the fourth and final step all of the custom landscaping so that's mainly gonna consist of custom trees and bone mill. There really isn't a whole lot of just open terrain that I'm able to manipulate that much so like this for example I can't really do anything here that's gonna look good so for spaces like this where I maybe couldn't fit in a custom tree I would just bone meal it and maybe add in a couple of extra bushes but yeah that's what I gotta do now trees and bone mill for the most part anyway. You know what guys, I think I'm actually coming around a little bit on the idea of custom trees. Those of you who know me well and have been watching my videos for quite a while, you know I don't really enjoy doing custom trees, I find it a little bit tedious sometimes, but I think that's always because I do them in massive stints, like I do so many trees all at once. Right here all I've done is maybe 10 trees at max and I've, I've really enjoyed making them which honestly surprised me a little bit. Um, I'm evolving as a builder which is obviously really lovely to see. Um, but these trees, they are... They're a little bit different. We've got some stripped acacia logs here. I didn't want to use spruce. I didn't want to use oak. We've done enough of that already in this village. So we've got a nice pop of orange here with our vibrant leaves. Mainly oak, but a little bit of birch added in just to have a bit of differentiation there. But I really like these. I love the orange. I really, really do. Very glad I decided to do that. But... Uh, something else I've messed around with with the custom trees is doing a couple of them as fences. I've never done that before. I see people do it quite a lot and I I've tried it in the past but it just doesn't work well usually. But I think these have turned out pretty good. Like that's a fence tree. This one is as well and a couple of others. So we've got a pretty good split of logs and fences. So yeah, pretty happy about that. And then I've got a couple of bushes added in. Um, 
just on some open spots that would have been good for a custom tree but just wasn't quite enough area to fit one in and then the rest of the spaces are just made up of bone mill, lots of grass and lots of flowers. I haven't used every flower believe it or not. I know there's quite a lot of colour on uh, going on around here which obviously was intentional. I want to make it look nice and bright and vibrant but I think I haven't used tulips or something like that. I've used basically every flower in the game so yeah that's the majority of what I've done and the only little bit of terror forming I did do was just along here on this part here. Now I I'm not really a massive fan of this. I think it's okay. It's certainly better than what it was before. It was simply just a flat dirt wall so I've made a miniature overhang of sorts and hello. <laughs> I had a feeling I was being watched. Yes very intense. Um, Yeah so I've got like miniature overhang and it looks better certainly than what it did but it's just such a small area to work with, but I think for the most part, that's pretty good. Speaking of terraforming and landscaping, I just want to fly over here a little ways and try and find a spot that I found earlier on, which is like the best naturally generated landscape I've ever seen. This right here. Does this not look like a custom terraforming job? Obviously without the slabs and the stairs and everything, but yeah, I, I just found this earlier. It's very close by to the home as you saw, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. This bit right here looks really good. Anyway, heading back over to the village now, and if we're just flying around taking a bird's eye view of our place, it looks so much better than what it did before. I mean, the custom trees really help, obviously, and all of the pathways, and all of the four steps, I think, has brought this place together to make it feel alive, adding in all of this immersion. I absolutely love it, and I'm just looking at this thinking, how amazing is it going to look when we replicate this, but over the entire span of our village wall that we've laid out here? It's going to be a big, long project, but when we do get it done far into the future, it's going to look so cool. I really cannot wait. I'm, I'm loving building this village. But yeah, those are the four steps to making your build feel alive, adding immersion and just really, really giving it that extra something. So I hope that was helpful to all of you. But there is one fifth and kind of unofficial step that I'm going to chuck in here, which you most likely did right at the start. Um, but all of these builds, for me personally, do not have an interior. And you don't necessarily have to, but in my opinion, I'm walking along here and looking in the windows, seeing torches, seeing grass, and it just looks bad. <laughs> like, I, I feel like adding interior is unnecessary for me personally. Um, so yeah, that's what I've got to do now, but if you say you're not very good at decorating interior, um, even just add a floor in and maybe chuck a bed or some chests or anything just to make it not be grass. <laughs> I'd say it was a significant improvement. So yeah, there's there's your fifth and final unofficial step to my four step plan. <laughs> that is already unofficial. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Go ahead on all of these houses and do some stuff on the inside. Most of these houses look pretty similar to each other on the inside or there's at least nothing really that different about them that's worth mentioning. So I'm just going to take a walk around here and we can step inside each of them, have a quick look and then walk back out again. So as you can see, they all have their own bed and then just a bunch of tables, flower pots, lanterns, of course, to make sure they're all lit up. And yeah, that, that's generally the same idea throughout all of them. Uh, the only thing that's really different that's worth mentioning is I've done a different floor design in each of them for the most part. So, uh, and I've also smoothed out all of the ceilings, of course, um, as ceilings don't look particularly good uh, with just the roof on show. So you kind of have to place some more blocks. But um, yeah, I've got stone brick in that one. As you can see, we've also got some stripped logs. Uh, there is diorite in one of them, I think. This one, I believe. And then the rest of them just have some brick, like this one here. Our house with all the texture, which I'm actually going to talk about real quick here. So I haven't long got finished done reading and replying to all of your guys' comments from last episode. And a good chunk of you seem to like this idea. Some of you even uh, quite like the diorite. I still haven't really come around to it, nor the entire idea 
as a whole. So I've got some bone blocks and mushroom stems here, which is what that is there, and that one along with the white terracotta. I think instead of putting this on every single building in the village, I'm just going to do it for the eight we have over here, which we've been transforming today. And then I can get a better idea as whether it's going to be something I want to do for the rest of the village. Um, plus, I don't have enough mushroom stems <laughs> to do it for everyone, I don't think. So yeah, I'm going to go around to all these houses, add a little bit of texture into each of them and see how it looks. But before we do that, I read a comment last episode from my good friend Paragraph8 who suggested I let these villagers that I'm not really going to use anymore loose. That way it's going to add a little bit of life to our village. They'll probably pick up some workstations if they haven't already claimed one that is. And yeah, they'll just be walking around and that way... They, they may die from some mobs and it wouldn't be the end of the world because I don't need them and that way I don't have to do the deeds. So all of them I think I'm just going to set free here apart from my mending villager in here because he's the only one I have. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to dig a little staircase on each of these so they're able to get out and just see how long they last, I guess. I'll give you an update next episode. So here is the before, and here is the after. Before, after. Before, after. I think it looks better. <laughs> Again, let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get a second opinion from you. But if we do decide to do this, I'm definitely going to have to set up some sort of mushroom farm. Because these blocks right here are very difficult to get hold of in mass quantities. Um, excuse me, sir. This is my bed, not yours. You have houses over there that you can sleep in. This is mine, get out. <laughs> we are just about ready to wrap up the episode now, but I thought we'd do one final walk around all the progress we've made this episode with the shaders on. So yeah, just gonna just gonna take a stroll on through. There's our wonderful notice board, which uh, thankfully hasn't moved. <laughs> Always worried I'm gonna place some water down and nudge those uh, armor stands, but yeah, I mean, this this is the type of immersion you want in Minecraft. I absolutely love this, and once we get some proper villagers in place, they'll all be commuting around here and living their lives in this beautiful city, and uh, or village, I guess it's not really going to be a city, I wouldn't say. Um, but yeah, this this is this is immersive. I really love this, and obviously will be even more so once we get the rest of the village done. We only have a small segment for right now, but um, yeah, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. I really hope this has helped you out if you were looking for this sort of thing. Um, maybe not all of you are <laughs> looking to to get a video like this, but I hope it has helped you out nonetheless. I, I had a lot of fun putting this together, but uh. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the progress on the village. Of course, I'm always welcoming lots of feedback and constructive criticism. I always appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. Really hope you did enjoy it. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.